morning. I'm Alexa Morales here with Oracle Groundbreakers for our first interview of the day here at Oracle uh, Open World London. And I'm with Kyle York, who's the VP of Product Strategy for Oracle, uh, based out of New Hampshire. And, and why are you based out of New Hampshire, Kyle? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Uh, really nice to be here in London. Um, I actually have a unique journey to Oracle. My company, uh, Dyn, was acquired uh, at the end of 2016, and Dyn's headquarters was in my hometown in Manchester, New Hampshire. So we've got a development center there now uh, and a product, uh, a product uh, uh, office uh, for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure in New Hampshire of about uh, 400, 500 people. Uh, just north of Boston. Yeah, and Dyn is an interesting company because it's uh, you know it's interesting that Oracle acquired it, but but it's a, a, a DNS uh, server company, right? That's right, yeah. And and so you you guys really know, and and now there's a, a portal you can go to that shows the internet and what's happening. I mean, explain that portal. Yeah, so the DNS, the domain name system, is a protocol, right? So uh, it's pretty geeky underpinnings of how the internet actually works and what Dyn. Um, uh, was as an independent company and still has, is as part of Oracle, was the world's leader in the domain name system. And so basically what that is, is it's the ability to map internet domains, URLs, to, uh, to IP addresses. Well obviously in the cloud world, that's a very important you know, uh, new uh, phenomenon because you're spinning up more instances and servers and, and, and CDNs and all these different things and it's a complex environment. Um, so what we've been able to do over the years is because we've been these experts in these protocols, including the BGP, which is the Border Gateway Protocol, we just have at Oracle the world's best map of the internet and the public internet and, and, and you know, basically we have sensors all over the world that uh, can look at the end user, mimic the end user and do this, uh, synthetic and real testing of the end user's interaction with the applications and workloads run, running wherever. Right. And so we can measure that, we can report on security incidents, uh, nation state conflicts, uh, just last week or this week Zimbabwe's internet went down. Right. Uh, these are the types of things and we're taking all that data, we've democratized it, put it in the internet intelligence tooling, um, and then also we're integrating all those services into how we design our network for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. We offer uh, services for free and paid as part of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure that are leveraging what we believe is the world's best data set for internet performance. Yeah, and it's absolutely fascinating to look at it where you see the map and you'll see these little dots of activity showing, you know, the internet's gone down here and, and sometimes it can be a, you know, transatlantic cable, yeah. you know, sometimes it can be, like you said, a geopolitical or, a, you know, nation state issue, yep. the, the government shuts down the internet in a country. And sometimes it's like a fat finger of a developer or an API script gone haywire. So, I mean, I think the key to remember is, you know, internet volatility is all over the place. What I love about it from a cloud infrastructure vendor perspective is, it's actually pretty sexy, you know, when you think of computers and compute and storage and networking and you think of DNS and, and you know, all these capabilities, you're not necessarily feeling like you can relate or get real uh, understanding of what that all means, but when you start to put it into great reports and uh, a dynamic reporting interface and, 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 it, and it's real time, it, it gives a unique lens into the landscape, and I think we all forget that the cloud gets back to the physical at some point. It's the it's the phone in our hand connected to the internet as the end right. user, and it's the actual physical infrastructure in data centers, whether they're your premise as an enterprise or they're a part of a cloud platform. So I just I just find it to be a really um, a democratization of cloud, and it's a it's a unique um, and a significant initiative of Oracle Cloud uh, and Oracle holistically in internet policy and governance and and also the ability to marry that to the cloud platform. Yeah, well, so first of all, I want to say congratulations uh, for using the word sexy at 10 a.m. No, sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed London. to do that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, uh, there's a bigger picture here for yes. Oracle, and that's the Oracle's uh, Generation 2 cloud. Yeah, exactly, yeah, so the one thing about Generation 1 clouds is they tended to be built for um, uh, high traffic websites or applications, right? Even at Dyn, when we were building Dyn, the way that we would market segment and, and target uh, prospects and potential customers was all around their web capacity. And, and web capacity equated to consumption, which equated to larger deals. Well, what we found in the enterprise is that the, the Gem One cloud model, the public cloud model, wasn't built for helping enterprises or 
companies of any size really who are running uh, technology on premise or in their own data center or inside a colo um, help them move to cloud. These complex, uh, highly integrated, uh, full ecosystem of software installed, licensed software products, what do they do? How do they move to cloud? Is there a pathway for them to cloud? Many of those applications obviously will go SaaS and they'll go to um, cloud-based applications, but what about the applications that are custom built on top of the Oracle database or any database for that matter? They also need pathways to cloud that might not all be outsourced to SaaS. They might be uh, internal tools to run companies or to run industries or even to run governments, and they need a cloud that they can lift and shift those assets to, um, ensure that they have a partner focused on security, governance, compliance, uh, who understands data regulations and the law, uh, and Oracle you know, is uniquely suited to do that in the enterprise. So that's really where my focus is today, is helping drive that product strategy, accelerate our roadmaps through partnerships or M&As uh, or unique integrations, but also get our story to market, to create market for Oracle Cloud, educate the market on why we're unique and different. And, and it's been going great. Yeah, I mean, and, and one of the interesting things, and I've written some articles about this, about our Gen 2 cloud is it's built uh, in Seattle, partially, yes. by a lot of the, the engineers who built the first generation cloud. Um, and so they've moved over from Amazon and That's Microsoft exactly right. and other places, and they've come to Oracle to to build something you know even better. And it's very interesting, uh, you know, just some of the the networking choices they've yep. made, uh, the infrastructure choices, and then of course the open choices yes. they've made, right? So that the idea being you don't have to uh, you know have a locked in uh, right. approach, right? So you can have a hybrid approach, right. and you can use and our whole stack is is open source based. That's right. Right. So the thing, um, yeah. So the the headquarters for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is Seattle. Don Johnson's our EVP of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, he was a very early engineer at Amazon. Clay McGurk's our CTO for our Cloud Infrastructure Group. Uh, also came from Amazon. So you know our leadership is Amazon. It's Microsoft. And in, in essence, they were recruited and said, "Hey, if you could build a new cloud targeting the enterprise with data." as the central data security and data performance as a central driver, what type of cloud would you build? And you know, I think all these things are about market timing, right? I think about, maybe about, you know, depending upon the analysts, about 15 to 25% of, of workloads, enterprise workloads have moved to public cloud. Well, we're playing for the other 75%, right? And I think the easier things have moved. Front-end websites, mobile applications, e-commerce stores, uh, those things have moved. And, and, and the first gen of cloud, which we have all the same tenants around, um, integrated into a more enterprise offering, have solved a lot of that. And we're, and we're gonna integrate all those things. But over the last few years, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has done an amazing job at, at becoming kind of the, the home for standardizing what open source technologies and capabilities will be funded, will be supported by the community, will continue to scale. And we are integrating and, 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 and creating interoperability across all of those standards for everything from orchestration to streaming to logging to telemetry. Uh, all these different areas, we're embracing Terraform and Kafka and Helm and Kubernetes, but also offering managed services inside OCI because customers want choice, so it's all about that flexibility. Yeah, and it's, it's great that you bring up uh, the Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation, and we were just at uh, KubeCon, yeah, exactly. and Oracle yeah. had just a slew of announcements, and uh, it, it is really interesting because uh, Kubernetes, there's all this excitement around it. It was so fun to be there and see all these people with pink hair and rainbow beards and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, and you could see there's a hiring frenzy going yep. on. It's very much like a gold rush feeling for this super niche thing. And Kubernetes is sort of the uh, the open source, I'm sorry, the uh, operating system for, for the web, right? For the, for the cloud is what I should say. Um, it's a platform, it's an inspiring platform sort of built for machines, so for machines to work with each other, sort of without the human, uh, you know, in the middle. But at the same time, it's such a difficult, you know, obtuse platform to understand. Yes. And so that's where these managed services come in, you know, where where you've got people taking that open source and then and then going, here's how you can actually work with this on a productive enterprise daily basis. That's exactly right. I think the. Um other thing that I've been finding kind of interesting, when I, as I've thought about the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and as I've always thought of open source and both building Dyn and being at Oracle the last couple of years, 
you know, one of the unique use cases I'm starting to see also for open source is people are still, our customers are lifting and shifting big complex environments, then using open source for uh, that interoperability on premise and a cloud, across cloud. So it's interesting, like you think like Cloud Native Computing Foundation, you think open source and you think net new apps, right? And you think modern and you do think the young engineers learning the coolest tricks of the trade. I can't tell you how many people said, what were all the kids working on over there? And it's funny because I actually saw a dynamic um, in, in cross the, the kind of, it's cross the chasm where also like engineers who are working on mission critical financial systems or mission critical you know supply chain systems uh, are also saying how do we leverage open source uh, for interoperability and you know again because CNCF's done such a good job accelerating the standardization of these tools and building that community and ecosystem it's become um, I think more sustainable and more hardened and I always joke today like Dyne could have never been built today right a, a point infrastructure pro product founded on DNS and a protocol in a cloud platform world. It's one product or feature of a massive amount of products or features. Well, what's happening now is co companies are either cloud platforms, which very few can compete and have the 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 the, the, the uh, purse strings of an Oracle, um, but also, or they're going open source and building really successful commercial businesses open source. And you're seeing less and less like point product infrastructure companies launch because again, those two, you have to pick a side and, and it's and it's it's an interesting dynamic that I think is happening. Yeah, and like you said, also it's clearly crossed over to uh, like enterprise. I mean, you also saw a lot of retail businesses there at uh, KubeCon. You know, Home Depot, um, which has made this like billion dollar uh, investment in IT. Yep. You know, you saw Nordstrom and Capital One and all these uh, these. Uh, well, even here, co-op here in. Um, uh, you know, uh, huge company in oil and gas and convenience stores. Uh, they just presented with Cap Gemini, one of our partners, yesterday, and it was the exact use case. It was a Taleo on-premise software install, moving to public cloud, using um, using open source for interoperability monitoring, things like that. Uh, same thing with Allianz, uh, one of our, part, our our customers for OCI. It was the same story, and I I remember walking off the stage going, "It's crazy!" Like like when I think about things, I I used to uncouple these two areas and now they're completely coming together and again it wouldn't be possible without the success of so many open source companies and one thing you, I mean, you guys talk about this a lot Oracle has a long and rich heritage in open source um, I think a lot of times Oracle gets this reputation and persona of, of not being open um, you know but if you look at our heritage in Linux and MySQL uh, you know we're the platinum sponsor Java. of the Apache Foundation Java of course and we just we just even open sourced our machine learning work we're doing inside OCI called GraphPipe so we're doing a lot of things FN project is our and, serverless uh, project Heladon. exactly so there's lots of things that we're doing and, and I think the Groundbreakers program, what we're doing in OCI from a, from a bringing a story to the market, um, and what we're doing across Oracle, we have to do a lot more education these days, especially in the, the cloud game, because you know it's, it's, a, it's a rental model, right? You're subscribing to use our services, and at any time you could say, hey, I'm done with this subscription. It's, it's no different than the way that we might subscribe to Spotify or Netflix or what have you. It's just taking that to the B2B context. Well, that's a relationship based on a partnership, and that partnership, um, um, you know, should be decades long, just like Oracle relationships have had for decades. Um, but you need to earn it every single day. So putting ourselves out there a lot more, I think, is what we're trying to do um, in this sort of next wave of Oracle. Right, and like you said, not everybody even knows that we have a cloud. They know we got Java, but they don't necessarily know yep. we have a cloud. So uh, to wrap this up, uh, Kyle, what what is sort of the, the the one thing you think somebody watching this video should go do a cloud trial or uh, go check out the internet intelligence of their region or what do you think yeah. is, the, is the I mean I thing? think all of the above obviously um, at, at uh, cloud.oracle.com slash IaaS is where all of our infrastructure um, capabilities are outlined but we also have a really tremendous blog we're on Twitter at Oracle IaaS and we've just been putting out a steady stream of content around use cases and the value and the architecture decisions, we're trying to sort of open the Komodo on you know, the secret sauce behind what makes our cloud unique and special. 
That's too many mixed metaphors. Is it? What did I say? Yeah, geez. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I say half the time. Um, but you know, I think it's I think it's just follow along, um, and we ask you to try it and play with it, and and let us know what you think because the only way we're going to continue to iterate and get better is to evolve. So we're excited about it. Great. Well, thank you for joining me, Kyle, and thank you for watching Oracle Groundbreakers. We'll be covering more speakers all day long.